From the mid-19th to mid-20th century, fraternal organizations and male-exclusive spaces such as the Freemasons, Elks, Shriners, Knights of Columbus, and the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, were an essential part of American society. They provided support systems for housing, job-seeking, networking, and friendship for men, and often formed a cornerstone of the local community. However, since the 1940s, these organizations have seen a dramatic decline in membership and influence, and many male exclusive spaces have been opened up to include women. This video will examine the causes and impacts of this decline. Fraternal organizations and male exclusive spaces flourished in the United States from the mid 19th to mid 20th centuries, catering to men who were seeking both social interaction and a sense of purpose. These organizations offered a variety of services, from community building to job placement assistance, and fostered a sense of camaraderie and brotherhood among members. The YMCA, in particular, was founded on Christian principles and emphasized the development of a healthy body, mind, and spirit. These organizations were an essential part of the fabric of American society. However, with the rise of the feminist movement in the 1960s and 70s, there was a push to exert influenza in men's spaces by opening up these organizations to women. The YMCA was one of the primary targets of these efforts. Feminists argued that the organization's male exclusivity was discriminatory and that women should be allowed the same opportunities for physical fitness, camaraderie, and networking. The pressure resulted in many YMCA facilities going co-ed by the late 1980s. This change had detrimental consequences for American men, particularly those who relied on these organizations for support. Young men were particularly affected. The opening of these organizations to women had a net negative impact on men. Male exclusive spaces traditionally offered a forum for men to gather and discuss issues in safe spaces that were specific to their gender. With the removal of these spaces, men lost a crucial avenue for emotional support and camaraderie. The decline of these fraternal organizations and the shift to co-ed spaces, coinciding with the loss of male-dominated industries and divisive social trends that denigrate men, has left many men without a clear societal role or a support network. Additionally, the decline of these organizations meant that many of the services they provided, such as housing assistance, job placement, networking opportunities, and community service, were no longer available to men in the same way. This has arguably contributed to a rise in social isolation among men, and research has linked this lack of social support to a range of mental health issues, including depression and anxiety. The decline of American men's fraternal organizations and men's spaces is tied to broader societal trends. It's important to recognize the unintended consequences that these changes may have had on men. In a society that increasingly values individual achievement over communal support, it's crucial to find new ways to provide men with the support networks they once found in these organizations. This could be through the creation of new men's organizations and frameworks that promote a healthy sense of masculinity and provide support to men while maintaining spaces where men can discuss and address issues that are unique to their experiences. There are promising examples of such efforts in modern society. Men's Sheds, a movement that started in Australia and has since spread worldwide, provides spaces where men can connect and contribute to their communities, while fostering a sense of belonging. Men's support groups and mental health initiatives are also on the rise, recognizing and addressing the unique struggles that men face. The importance of male exclusive spaces lies in their ability to foster unique camaraderie, emotional expression, and support among men. In a society that often discourages men from displaying vulnerability, these spaces can encourage open dialogue, emotional literacy, and mutual understanding. Furthermore, they offer opportunities for mentorship, with older men sharing life experiences and wisdom with younger members fostering intergenerational relationships that are not always readily available in modern society. Men's groups can also tackle specific male health and societal issues directly, promoting awareness and providing resources in a supportive and understanding environment. These spaces also nurture a sense of belonging, which is a fundamental human need. 
This is particularly important considering research has shown that loneliness and social isolation can have severe effects on mental and physical health. The U.S. labor force participation rate for men has been in a steady decline since the 1940s, dropping from 86.7% in 1948 to just over 69% in 2020, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This decline has been driven by various factors, including the rise of automation, the disappearance of traditional manufacturing jobs, and a mismatch of skills due to changes in technology and broader social trends. This indicates that more effort needs to be made to recreate the opportunities for camaraderie, social networking, mentorship, and training that were once provided by fraternal organizations and men's spaces. If you have thoughts on the importance of men's spaces and support networks, please speak up in the comments.
Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this. Oh, my God.